Welcome to this episode of the NLN podcast, Nursing Edge Unscripted Scholarship Track. I'm your host, Dr. Stephen Palazzo, a member of the editorial board for Nursing Education Perspectives. Nursing Edge Unscripted and our track entitled Scholarship celebrates the published work of select nurse educators from the NLN's official journal, Nursing Education Perspectives, and the NLN Nursing Edge blog. The conversations embrace the author's unique perspectives on teaching learning innovations and the implications for nursing program development and enhancement. In this episode, we will discuss the impact of nursing education on career intention related to public health and community health nursing. We will discuss the author's article, Career Intention of Baccalaureate Student Nurses, Understanding the Barriers, Enablers, and Predictors Towards Public Community Health Nursing. The discussion will focus on the unique findings of the authors who published this manuscript in the current issue of Nursing Education Perspectives, Volume 44, Issue 4. The authors are faculty of the School of Nursing, Oregon Health and Sciences University, and Monmouth, Oregon. And today we have Dr. Angie Dolkerty, who is an associate professor. Heather Franklin is a biostatistician. Heather Voss is an associate professor. And Nathan Diekman is an associate professor. So first, please briefly describe the purpose and methods that you use to conduct your study and what drew you and your group to this question. We were particularly drawn to the question by noticing that very few of our graduates go into the public health arena or even community nursing in general. Most of them choose their final practicums to be in acute care, critical mm -hmm. care, emergency departments. Um, and this is despite the fact that we spend quite a bit of time in our programme and have dedicated courses focusing on population health and community health. So we wondered what we were doing that was maybe turning them off public health nursing or what could we do better to turn them on to public health nursing. Um, so that was really what we um, decided would be the kind of main premise of our work. And so what we did was we surveyed all baccalaureate and accelerated baccalaureate students across the state of Oregon. Um, so we did not focus on RN to BSN as they pro possibly were in the workforce already. And we really had two aims. We wanted to know when you come into the nursing program, what was your career intention at that time? And then while you've been in the program, has that career intention changed in any way? So those were the two clear aims. And we undertook a cross-sectional survey um, to try and determine those aims and find out if there was anything, anything at all that was predictive um, about um, either their initial influence or was predictive about whether they changed their intention while they were in the program? Well, it's a great question. I've always wondered that too. We have quite a few students when they come into the program already pretty set on what area they want to specialize in. And it can become very difficult to sometimes convince them to uh, look at other specialty areas as a possibility. We do have some that go, you know, change uh, mm -hmm. as they go through the program, but you're right about community and population health. So in your um, article, can you discuss a little bit more detail about fixed intention, kind of what you talked about as when they're coming into the program and how that influenced students intention after graduation? Were you surprised that nursing curriculum did not have more impact on the students over the, in, their intent? It appears most of the influence came from outside the nursing program. That was our main finding, um, and we, we described it as that phrase, fixed intention, because largely what we saw was that students do come in with a with a career intention in mind. And we saw maybe about a 5% change in that, um, but certainly they did not come in. We did, we did not see any evidence that as an, as an education program, and this is all the schools across Oregon, this was right. not obviously unique to ours. We did not see any evidence that we as educators or our curriculum were influencing uh, career intention in any direction so that that was surprising to us and I suppose somewhat depressing as a public health nurse myself right. um, that we really have certainly in our program worked hard we've got dedicated population health course we as I say we spend a lot of time in placements that are non-traditional if you like non-acute based um, and what we're seeing was that those who choose to work in that area already had that destination in mind. 
I lived in Washington State for 30 years, so I'm very familiar with Oregon. And Oregon's quite a rural state outside the major metropolitan areas. So it does surprise me that more students, probably who came from some of those rural areas too, did not have any intent to go back to those rural areas or not in a way that was population or community focused, because um, it is very community population focused, the state kind of um, is in that mindset. So what are your thoughts about like a population health internship? So for example, the students um, would go for the whole quarter to three quarters in the year or two semesters in the year um, throughout doing their clinical placement there where they're really getting an immersive type of experience where they're helping actually develop programs within that community partnership with a population health focused with the eyes of policy around it uh, and seeing it towards the end. Um, might that grab their attention more? Or if not, what other ideas have you had as a, as, as a team to think about strategies that would get students more interested in community and population health? I am intrigued by the public health internship approach. In a way, we do something very similar to that within the Oregon Health and Science um, University curriculum. We have two courses that follow each other, um, and each of them are 10-week terms. One's wow. population health um, nursing, so they're out there in population health settings or community settings, and then it follows into a leadership further 10-week um, course. So they really are embedded in population health, community health settings, and they work on projects. We don't call it an internship. They're definitely clinical placements attached to each right. of those courses. But even with that, so that's 20 weeks, essentially, um, that they're in our program, certainly in dedicated placements. And that it's still not moving that needle, as we, we talk about in the paper. And some of them, I mean, they're not all with public health nursing placements. And I, I wonder sometimes if that needs to be more structured. Mm -hmm. They need to see more of the nursing role in community and population health right. settings. We focus a lot on social determinants of health, which is crucial. And so our students might be out um, working with homeless organizations, um, alcohol and tobacco prevention organizations, different, different agencies that have a focus on social determinants. Some of them are with nurses, um, but we don't, there are not enough public health nurses and right, they're doing well, right. particularly post COVID. Um, so we kind of lack that real ability to make sure that all our students are exposed to um, population health nursing um, or community health nursing roles. And I think if, we're, if we restructure to think about how we really manage that, we might be moving in a, in a better direction. That, that's interesting, and that's true. It's it's a very difficult um, dilemma that I, I think faces everyone, not just in your state. I mean, I experienced that here in Florida. I experienced it when I worked in Washington, when I worked in Nevada. Um, this this hesitancy to feel that community population health is going to be the clinical that's going to help them be successful in the program, and I, I don't know what it is, or you know, as we know nationally. The trend is towards moving out of the acute care setting and into mm -hmm. the community setting, the home-based care, et cetera. And there's going to be, you know, a need for more nurses in those areas. And how, what do you think, what do we do? How do we attract more students and, and really get them to understand the value of this type of nursing? Well, that was one of the major, you know, questions that we asked ourselves and why we did this study. Um, and one of the kind of findings that we we kind of you know thought about was if they're coming in with fixed intentions largely then we need to kind of embed those intentions earlier and we need to be much more intentional about our outreach work and we've actually that you know there's a follow-up study that we're working on just now with pre-nursing students where we've um, really explored the role of nursing from cradle to grave focusing very minimally on the acute care but not diminishing that that we're you know this particular approach was what can we do to prevent illness and, and you know really get in there early and so we'll work with pre-nursing but we, what our next phase will be is that outreach to the um high school middle school okay settings because I'm not sure if you think about where people learn about nursing you don't see a lot of public health nurses or population health nurses in the media um those that wanted to work in population health settings already were aware of that setting yes. and there. So it tells me that 
we need to do our education a lot earlier than we're doing about what nursing can be. Well, I noticed you use social cognitive career theory um, to guide you as a framework, and intention's a big part of that, of course. So as we know, intention you know manifests by many different behavioral cues um, and try, trying to capture or, or I guess look at those different parts of the, the, the uh, framework and what could you uh, make strides and what areas could you look at? And, and I suppose you're going to, are you going to go forward with some more work in the future with this question or? Yep, as I said, we, we, we're, we're doing some work just now and we're looking, as I say, we're focusing on pre-nurses and we, 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 we took them through um, a kind of theatre style simulation workshop where we really showed them the role of nurses in um, non-acute settings, including end of life. We kind of looked at different right. roles really you know got some discussion going about that and we we I think we were successful in opening up their eyes to while well, nursing is more than than what the acute care setting and hospital based settings but I really the goal is to get into high schools and middle schools and okay. start exploring nursing but from a much more um community population um health nursing sort of sense I think there are lots of discussions that we can have um, and really try and raise an excitement and passion for that area of nursing. Well, any final words or uh, uh, words of encouragement, uh, things that you want to say to the audience about what the next steps would be if, if they're having the same dilemma and trying to, to figure out how to do this? I think that the, the, one of the, the things that came out in our findings, and I've heard this for a number of years is that students are still being told by the by even by people working in population health settings that it's a good idea to get a few years of acute care experience under your belt and I would right. I would really like to send out a message that we stop doing that yes um, I agree. education programs across the country we are preparing our students for all settings in nursing that's that's our mandate that's what we're doing um, and they need to hear that they are they are able to work in all settings of nursing from the point of graduation I agree. I tell students all the time when I'm counseling them that if your area, your specialty area is this, then that's what you go into. Yeah. Yeah. You can always go back and do med surge four or five years from now if you want. There's yeah. going to be a need for med surge nurses. They will give you a residency program if you need one. You know, go where your passion is. If yeah. it's community health, population health, or, you know, obstetrics, whatever, don't have to do med surge for a year or two just because that's the way it was done 30, 40 years ago, you know. Right. So. Well, I really appreciate your time. Um, it was a really great conversation and I encourage everyone to take a look at the article. It's a really good read. Career Intention of Baccalaureate Student Nurses, Understanding the Barriers, Enablers and Predictors towards Public Community Health Nursing. And I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been a real pleasure. And again, thank you. Thank you.